What do all of these animals have in common? The Gila Monster, the Orchard Swallowtail Caterpillar, yeah. the Peacock Mantis Shrimp. Yeah. They all have funny names. The Wonder Puss. Exit, stage left. How do they come up with these names? Like this. Ta-da! It's a fried egg jellyfish. Don't forget the secretary bird. Or the blue ribbon eel. And me, a Boscus monkey. Get the scoop on what's what with your call what. Wait, what? Your call what? Coming up today, meet the crane with a mane that's the envy of the savannah. Stunning feather cut. The salty animal that isn't sure if it should sink or swim. Am I a stone or fish? And hit the road with an adventurous group of camels. Nothing is stopping this desert road trip. What do you get when you add a rather large forehead, a dash of Polynesian culture and a fish? It's a humphead Maori wrasse. You're called what? A humphead Maori wrasse. OK, welcome to my little part of the reef. I'll be your friendly guide for the day. The humphead Maori wrasse is found from the Red Sea and down the coast of East Africa and from Japan to New Caledonia. These gentle giants are often the welcoming committee on their resident coral reefs. The humphead Maori wrasse reach up to two metres in length and nearly 200 kilograms in weight. If you have a camera with you, about now is a good photo opportunity. Their stunningly patterned faces are reminiscent of traditional New Zealand Maori tattoos. They get the humphead part of their name from their big forehead dome. It's thought the wrasse's humps help protect their faces when they head in for a coral feed. Cheese! Sorry, that was a bit more of a trout pout. They also have generous lips to help them chow down on spiky things. With a taste for small fish and sea urchins, as well as hard-shelled animals such as mollusks and crabs, humphead wrasse have mighty strong chompers. They can even chew through coral. <coughs> the humphead always get a few clingy fans. These groupies are called remoras. These fish clean parasites off the wrasse and occasionally gobble up their leftovers. The humphead Maori wrasse. If there's one of these gentle giants on the reef you're visiting, it will be sure to let you know. Hope you enjoyed your visit. Come and say hi again soon. What do you get when you cross polka dots with a C and a healthy salad ingredient? It's a black-spotted sea cucumber. You're called what? A black-spotted sea cucumber. If you look into a sea garden, you might spot me. But back off. I don't want anything to do with your salad. Black-spotted sea cucumbers can be found in the tropical nurseries of the Indo-Pacific Oceans. They grow in sunnier spots of coral reefs, in shallow waters down to depths of around 30 metres. Seriously, you don't want me in your salad. Look at these black spots. I'm getting mouldy. <laughs> these sea cucumbers aren't a fruit or a vegetable. They're not even a plant. They're part of a family that includes starfish and sea urchins. They're called echinoderms. Yeah, eat those guys. They look tasty. Oh, OK, no, 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 no maybe not that one. Black-spotted sea cucumbers have long, soft bodies covered in small bumps, like a salad cucumber. But these are cucumbers that can move. They have rows of tiny tube feet running down their body to help them move across the seafloor. These are not their feet. Black-spotted sea cucumbers have mouth tentacles they use to sweep over every little nook and cranny, searching for algae and tiny animals to scoop inside. Right, dinner is over. Time to zip up the mouth and... The sea cucumber is a slow mover, which makes them a target for turtles, crustaceans and fish looking for a side salad. So this animal has one more trick up its slimy sleeve to shoo them away. They spill their guts. Ew! OK, that did it. I'm totally off cucumber in my salad. The black-spotted sea cucumber, a marine treat you do not want to invite to dinner. 
What do you get when you cross a festive tree with a marine worm? It's a Christmas tree worm! You're called what? A Christmas tree worm! Yay! Have you seen my friend Starfish? He's supposed to go at the top! These underwater invertebrates can be found bringing cheer in tropical waters around the world. They decorate coral reefs all year round. You'll find them in shallow waters with plenty of light, where they burrow deep into coral heads. Jingle the bells! Here I come! These worms are named after Christmas trees, but the trees are just a small part of the worm we can see above the coral. They dig long tubes and keep their bodies in there. Each worm has brightly coloured crowns they can poke out from their bodies into the sea. Is it time to open the presents yet? They pop out in pairs. That's because the worm has two of them. These tree-like crowns are vividly coloured, but they do a lot more than look pretty. Christmas treat time! Can someone pass the candy canes? The crowns are spirals of feather-like filters that trap tiny plants and animals, then pass them down for the worm to feed on. Oh, I ate too much again. Time for a festive snooze. Christmas tree worms don't move much and rarely, if ever, leave the tunnels they built. Much like tree forests on land, colonies of these worms create complex root systems of burrows through living coral. These tubes keep them safe from other animals looking for a holiday treat to snack on. Crabs, shrimp, sea urchins and larger reef fish like to eat Christmas tree worms. That's why they're so quick to zip inside when they sense any movement in the water nearby. Are they gone? Can I come out now? Those guys really know how to ruin a celebration. <laughs> the Christmas tree worm. Delightful decorations of the reef you can enjoy every day of the year. What happens when you take the colour of a banana and mix it with a goose? You get a... Yellow mongoose! You're called what? A yellow mongoose. Oh, hi. I'm answering your ad for a flatmate. I'm tidy and good to have around in case of trouble. These ferret-like carnivores are found across the tip of southern Africa mostly in the semi-desert scrub and grasslands where they can tunnel networks of burrows underground. They are prized housemates, sharing their burrows with meerkats and cape ground squirrels. These long underground tunnels can have up to 40 different entrances. Oh man, I forgot my keys again. I'll just go to the back door. Or, or, or the back back door. Or the back 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 door. The burrow animals work together in the ultimate share house team. When a big bad burglar like a snake comes along to raid the den for young, the noisy cape ground squirrels and meerkats raise the alarm. Snake! 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 And that's when they send in the muscle, the yellow mongoose. The word mongoose comes from an old Indian word, mangus, linked to snake killing. You shall not pass! The fleet-footed mongoose is one of the few animals in the world to take on a cobra and win. I spit on you. Oh, you're messing with the wrong goose. The yellow mongoose has its own motivations, though. It eats snakes as well as bird's eggs and lizards. Oh, you need a lot of protein for games. The yellow mongoose, the burrow buddy you definitely want to invite in. <laughs> Camels love a desert journey. Can you guess what a group of camels is called? Is it a boat of camels? Or is it a caravan of camels? Or is it a plane of camels? If you guessed caravan, you were right. A what? It's a caravan of camels. Family road trip, who's excited? Are we just going through the desert again? You betcha! These holiday makers can be found in Northern Africa, Southwestern Asia and have been introduced to Australia. They roam desert terrains, prairies and steppes. Look, over there everyone, sand. Take a picture. I can't, I don't have a camera. Or thumbs. Camels were once the companion animal of choice for merchants and explorers across deserts and other hostile regions. These groups of travellers were referred to as caravans and the name now applies to camels. 
Camels have two large toes on each leg that spread out that stop the camel from sinking into the sand and help navigate rocky terrain. They can even pick up speed capable of hitting 65 kilometers an hour. Nothing is stopping this desert road trip better than any theme park. Am I right, kids? Yes, Dad. Camels can go up to five days without water. This is thanks to their trademark humps, which can store up to 35 kilograms of fat. Camels break it down into water and energy when they need it. Kids, pit stop! They'll happily graze on grasses, leaves and even sharp, thorny plants other animals can't eat. A caravan of camels. One group road trip you don't want to miss. Hey, Dad, where are we? I believe the correct answer is... lost. ID crisis! Here's an aquatic puzzle that should sink before it swims. What do you get when you cross a rock with a reef fish? A stonefish! You're called what? A stonefish. Am I a stone or a fish? I'm just going to sit here real still while you all think about it. These stony-faced fish live in tropical waters in the Indian and Pacific Oceans, as well as the Red Sea. They prefer coral and rocky reefs and creek mouths where, like a rock, they sink to the bottom and do this. They sit as still as a stone and they've developed a bumpy, mottled exterior to look like one too. That's why they're called stonefish. Here's me thinking it was because of my rugged good looks. Some are big rocks, up to half a metre long. Many are so still, they even have algae growing on them. Hey, starfish, do you realise you're crawling over a living thing here? But this is a stone with a sting. Stonefish have these toxic needle-like fin spines running along their back to keep any predators like sea snakes and sharks at bay. They're very closely related to the scorpion fish, which also has deadly spines. Wow, your fins are so beautiful. Thanks, you're quite uh, unusual too. But stonefish do get a little animated at feeding time. They're ambush predators and will use their powerful jaws and large mouths to suck down fish and shrimp whole. It's the very occasional eye swivel and fin shuffle that gives this fishy stone away. The stonefish. ID crisis solved. What do you get when you take the colour of a rhino, add some royal jewellery and a crane? A grey-crowned crane. You're called what? A grey-crowned crane. The secret to my silky smooth locks? I'll tell you, but don't let the lions know. The grey-crowned crane is the national bird of Uganda. These wading birds reign over wetlands, grassy plains close to water where they graze for most of the day. Oh, this mud, delicious, I tell you, very Moorish. Many cranes, like the Australian Brolga, are renowned for their graceful courtship dances. Care to dance, me lady? The grey-crowned crane is no exception, but has one special feature that ensures it stands out on a wetlands dance floor. It's this spectacular crown of golden feathers that makes this crane the envy of the African grasslands. Hmm, I thought I was the main attraction when it came to golden locks around here. These crowns look a bit like grassy clumps, which helps the big bird to blend in as it's walking. Stunning feather cut. It's a big bird, nearly a metre tall. They also have long wingspans, more than two metres across. And a touchdown. Let's see those big bird ostriches try that one. The grey crowned crane, a crane with a mane that reigns supreme on the savannah. Hmm. <laughs> I can't believe a bird stole my crown. Families! Say hello to the hair family. Can you guess what male and female hairs are called? Is it Romeo and Juliet? Or is it Jack and Jill? Or are they called Ron and Hermione? <laughs> if you guessed Jack and Jill, you're right! Uncle, what? Jack and Jill. Hey, Jack, would you like to fetch a pail of water? Sure. 
What could go wrong? Hares are global animals. They've been introduced to every continent except Antarctica. They love open grasslands such as meadows and farmland clearings. Don't forget hills! Speaking of hills, hurry up and get that water jack! When these adorable furry creatures have offspring, the babies are called leverets. Jack and Jill and a leveret? What, they couldn't come up with a name starting with J? Don't look at me. Baby hares are called leverets because these animals belong to the Leporidae family, which includes rabbits. While they may look similar, hares and rabbits are quite different. Hares are bigger and have much longer ears. I reckon we can run faster too. Come on, Jill, let's get that pail. These furry creatures are incredibly fast and can reach speeds of up to 70 kilometers an hour. Gotta get that pail, Jill. Gotta get that pail. Where is it? Where's the pail? Their speed comes in handy when it comes to avoiding several fearsome predators. Wolves, servals, and birds of prey are just some of the predators that feast on hares. I think we lost them. Time for Miss Journey Snack Jack. Bark, juicy buds, small twigs, and lush shoots are their favourites. On this healthy diet, wild hares can enjoy lifespans of four to eight years, some living for as long as 12. Hey, Jill, I think I remember what happened last time we fetched that pail. The hare family. Jack, Jill, and baby Leverett. A happy family bounding straight out of a nursery rhyme. What do you get when you cross something pink with a smelly skunk, a clown, and a fish? It's a pink skunk clownfish. You're called what? A pink skunk clownfish. Oh no, I'm named after a skunk, but I'm actually not that smelly. That wasn't me, I swear. This marine fish occurs in tropical waters off the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. Pink skunk clownfish can be found swimming around coral reefs, living amongst the tentacles of sea anemones. It's like living in a car wash. Can't be stinky when you're this clean. There are lots of different types of clownfish which are named after the stripes on their bodies that look a bit like clown makeup. On a pink skunk, the long white stripe that runs along the top of their peachy coloured body looks just like the bold white markings on a skunk's fur. See, it's because I look like a skunk, not because I stink like one. Me thinks I can smell a liar. While they may be pinky orange in colour, the pink part of this fish's name comes from the type of anemone they usually inhabit, the magnificent sea anemone. This beautiful animal has an eye-catching pink face. They might look delicate and harmless, but their tentacles have harpoon-like stingers that pack quite a punch. Bring it on! I can take it! Clownfish have a thick layer of slimy mucus on their bodies to protect them from the stings. With a variety of predators such as large fish, eels and sharks, it helps them to have a home base with solid security. In return, clownfish guard the anemone from potential predators like butterfly fish and also provide their home with nutrients from their waste. Ew! You can relax all you want in here, pink skunk clownfish. Be yourself. What a relief. The pink skunk clownfish. What a laugh. What do you get when you cross some prickly thorns with a devious devil? A thorny devil. You're a thorny devil. Like my wicked outfit, Halloween. Here I come. Also known as mountain devils and thorny dragons, these spiky reptiles are native to the deserts of Australia. Being covered from head to tail in fierce looking spikes, it's obvious where the thorny part of their name comes from. Cacti have got nothing on me. I see your point. Each of their spikes is no bigger than the thorns on a rose stem, giving these small lizards a suit of armor and a don't even think about eating me swagger. I love feeling safe, but I really miss the hugs. As for the devil part of their name, that's a term sometimes given to those who behave badly. You better believe it, I'm bad. Want to see my bad moves? <laughs> Wicked, huh? Their thorny exterior is striking for another reason. This lizard can drink with its skin. Say what? 
With Australia's vast deserts being some of the driest places on Earth, these crafty critters need every drop of water they can get. Thorny devils have grooves between their thorns that attract moisture. These collect and channel water, such as dewdrops, to the lizard's mouth. This cool water collecting adaptation is also observed in their spiky relative, the horned lizard from North and Central America. Drought? What drought? Am I right, cuz? The thorny devil enjoys a well-rounded diet of juicy black ants. They can consume thousands of ants a day. The thorny devil, a clever lizard that makes a point of surviving in hellishly hot deserts. <laughs> Cheetahs are the world's fastest land animals. You'd better be speedy to guess this group name. Is a group of cheetahs called a partnership of cheetahs, an agreement, or a coalition of cheetahs? The answer is... A coalition! You're called what? A coalition of cheetahs. Morning, everybody. Please take your seats for today's meeting. Let's get down to business. Wait, where's Charlie? Cheetahs can be found across eastern and southwestern Africa. They like dry, open grasslands where they can pick up pace to hunt down prey. These pacey predators can hit a mighty maximum of 100 kilometres an hour. That's more than four times faster than the average human. Oh, I am running so late for this meeting. Cheetahs have elongated spines to help them stretch out to gain speed, and their legs are longer than other big African cats. Unlike night-stalking lions and leopards, they prefer to hunt in the daylight hours, early morning or late afternoon. That means cheetahs need an extra bit of camouflage to disappear into the landscape, and their signature spots help with that trick. Female cheetahs may be seen with their cubs, but generally prefer to go solo. The males will form groups called coalitions. Thank you for finally joining us, Charlie. Been chasing baboons again? No? Maybe? <laughs> Coalition is a word usually used in business or politics when groups come together in a partnership to achieve a goal. In the cheetah's case, the common goal is protecting their territory. Cheetahs are the only big cats that can't roar. If coalition members become separated, the individuals will call out to each other with a series of yips. All in favour, say yep. 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 A coalition of cheetahs. A name you now know if you ever come across this Savannah committee meeting. <laughs> ID crisis. Here's a confusing reptilian mashup. What do you get when you mix a slithering serpent with a scampering lizard? It's a snake lizard! You're called what? A snake lizard! I'm trying to figure out why everyone keeps running away from me. Do you know why? There are many kinds of snake lizards all over the world in Europe, Asia, Australia and the Americas. These reptiles live in open forests and grasslands with good ground cover to hide in. Unfortunately for them, they suffer from a bad case of mistaken identity. Hi, friends! Snake! Run away! Particularly in Australia, where they look a lot like local lethal snakes, the striped snake lizard is very similar to a young brown snake, which is the second most venomous snake in the world. Run! I don't seem to be able to. The snake lizard is also known as the legless lizard. A legless lizard has tiny vestigial or leftover legs at the end of their body. Life without legs helps these ground dwellers to wind through grass and burrow into soil. I don't have legs and I must be a snake. Is that right? Most snakes don't have eyelids, while most snake lizards do. Their bodies are generally longer and thinner than a snake's. I like a bite-sized meal. Would a snake like to join me for dinner? Perhaps he'll be my friend. Snakes and snake lizards both enjoy some of the same food items, like insects and caterpillars. However, a snake lizard isn't able to unlock its jaws like a snake can, which means it can't eat larger mammals, birds and other reptiles. Other reptiles? Oh dear, oh, cancel the dinner date! And finally, a snake lizard isn't venomous. 
It's more closely related to geckos and skinks than snakes. Yay! Our friends! Don't let these looks fool you. This animal is all lizard and zero snake. The snake lizard. ID crisis solved. What do you get when you take a fragrant, musky perfume and an enormous horned mammal? You get a... Musk ox. You're what? A musk ox. Ooh, what is this lovely smell? Foxy ox or divine bovine? Musk oxen live in the frozen Arctic from Canada to Greenland. These enormous mammals get their name from the strong, musky odour that the males produce during breeding season. Foxy ox is an earthy blend of sandalwood and fresh grass. The perfect fragrance to keep you warm on a cold winter's night. Yeah. These smooth movers roam the Arctic tundra in pursuit of things like grass, roots, moss and lichen. Weighing up to 360 kilograms, much larger than a grizzly bear, these huge mammals need to eat a lot of greens to feel full. It takes a lot of moss to look this good. When musk oxen eat, they constantly move across the Arctic tundra. By doing this, they never overgraze one area. This is the coolest place I've eaten in this week. Looking like a boss is easy when you have a boss. That's where the two horns meet on a male's head. The boss acts like a crash helmet, protecting the guy's skulls when they headbutt each other in fights. Foxy Ox is so last year, bro. Divine Bovine with a touch of vanilla is going to sweeten all the ladies' hearts. Their bovine cousin, the bison, may look similar, but the musk ox is actually more closely related to sheep and goats. In fact, their scientific name actually means musky sheep cow. <coughs> the musk ox has been roaming the Arctic for thousands of years, so they know how to keep warm. They have grown an overcoat and a second shorter undercoat that is super soft and toasty warm. Just like me. Now come in close so you can smell me. The musk ox, a down-to-earth beast with a smell to match. <laughs>